Are you looking for an agile product backlog template? Perhaps something just like this, or maybe even a template just like this. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to create these templates from scratch and also share some tips and suggestions along the way. Now, if you are short of time, I have made both of these templates available for instant download. There is a link in the description down below if you do want to pick those up and save yourself some time. Nevertheless, let me now show you exactly how I have created these templates from a brand new blank workbook. So the first thing that I'd recommend that you do is just give your document a title. So in B2, I've just typed in Agile Product Backlog. That way, if you send this to anyone, they know exactly what they're looking at. We want to differentiate this from the rest of the document. So in B2, I've got that selected. And on the home ribbon, I'm just expanding the font size out to about 20. I'm gonna hit bold as well. Now you can choose a font that you like the look of or that works for your maybe company branding or something like that, but I'm gonna leave it as Calibri for now. The other thing I'd recommend that you do is select A1 through to, let's just go M2 for now, and just give this, you know, a background color. So on the fill there on the home ribbon, I've just used a, a kind of light green. This is when you can use your company colors if you wanted to in branding. Um, but what we want to do is essentially differentiate this out from the rest of the document. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up the columns and the data points that we want to collect. So the first is task ID. Now I'll write all of these in and then I'll show you how we can format the table to look more aesthetically pleasing and also set up some drop downs as well. Now, one thing I will say is that you may want all of these columns, you may want to remove some or adapt them to suit your needs. What I'm sharing with you here is kind of the gold standard of what a product backlog should look like and should include what people expect it to include. But again, as an example, task description may be too much information that you want to collect. So, you know, you may want to remove some of these. That's what I'm essentially getting to. So we've got task ID, sprint task, task description, assigned to. Next up, we're gonna have start date. We are then going to have finish date in here. We are then going to have an option for a drop down for story. Uh, and obviously that's gonna be whether there is um, you know, whether it's a user story or not, whether there's value to the user or it's more of an enhancement or a bug fix, as an example, more of a technical. Um, I'll show you that in a second. We've then got sprint ready. We then have priority, which is going to have a select list of options. Status, again, there's going to be certain drop down options we're going to want here. Then I'm going to suggest that we include story points, somewhere to document that and then somewhere to recognize if we have assigned to a sprint. So I've put all of those in there for now. At which point we're gonna go B4 and I'm gonna select, left click on my mouse, select all the way through to, is that? No, it's in M, isn't it? I'm gonna select all of that and I'm gonna go down to say row 20. At which point I'm gonna go insert at the top here and then I'm gonna click table and you'll see this pops up. So where is the data for your table? I've already selected that. So that's already in there by default when I selected cell B4 to M20. My table has headers because it does. It's those that we've already just typed out. I'm gonna press okay. And you'll see here it's created a nice table format. At which point, so if you ever basically go off of this table to get back to this kind of view, you just click on table design or make sure that ribbon's kind of opened up. So the first thing we're gonna do is rename the table. So I'm just gonna call this backlog. That way, if you ever need to reference a table, for instance, if you want to set up some formulas, you can leverage this table name. The next thing we're going to do as well is just change the, the style and formatting. It is a little bit, this blue isn't kind of congruent with what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do here is in the table design, there's loads of different table styles that we can use from scratch. And yeah, you can use one that kind of suits your, your branding if you like, um, or you can set up one from scratch. So to do that, you click new table style, you'd give it a name, you select the whole table and then click format and you just run through this process really with the border font, etc. I'm not gonna do that for now. Uh, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose, if I click this drop down, let's just choose to get up and running as quickly as possible. I like the look of this one, but I am gonna alter it slightly. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna put this as, so back to the home ribbon, I'm gonna change this to black font color and I'm actually going to put some grid lines in as well. So I'll just go all borders for now. Okay, so that is looking good. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna play it a little bit further. I'm gonna put that as a more of a lighter gray. Excellent. So we're in 
good shape so far. The next thing we need to do is just work through each of the different columns and set some things up. So what we can do in this one is we can type in the sprint. So as an example, sprint one, and then we can type in the tasks for each sprint. So task one, task two, task three. We'll do five tasks as an example. Now you could also, and it'd probably make more sense to have the, the, a short name for the task instead of task one, task two, etc. But once you're kind of happy, let me put sprint two in here. You can start to bold these. So to differentiate the sprints from the tasks. And another thing that you can do is if we select the tasks here like this from C6 through to C10, we can indent in the alignment. So I'm in the home ribbon and we can bring them in a little bit like this. And that you've got this kind of nice relationship then, and it's just, it's just easier to, you know, on the eye. So that's great. Task description, we can make this a little bit bigger. Well, the other thing I'm gonna do actually is on row four, you see this little icon here? If you hover over in the middle, you'll see that. Left click on my mouse, I'm gonna make the height a little bit bigger, just for that kind of nice uh, heading, if you like. I'm going to select all of these actually before we move on, and I'm gonna put those in the middle like that. So in the alignment, home ribbon, just click that one here. Now, assign to, we can leave as is. Start date and finish date, I'm gonna expand those out a little bit. What I'm gonna do for these is I'm gonna select the column, so column F, I'm gonna right click here, format cells, I'm gonna go date, and then you can choose one of these that you, you want to, to leverage. I'm gonna use this one at the top. I'm gonna to do the same for finish date, and basically when you put in a date, so let's just put in 1st of November as an example. Oh, didn't like that for some reason. I'm going to go on back on that. It basically moves it into that format. So for some reason, I didn't like that. Um, let me try 01 nov. Oh, there you go. See, first and of, it picked it up. There we go. So there we've got that kind of formatting. We're going to do the same for finish date. So format cells, date, we we'll use the same, but to make sure you use the same. I'm going to remove that for now. Story, this is a yes or no, and I'll show you how to set that up in a second. Sprint ready, this is going to be a yes or no as well. Priority, we want certain statuses. Uh, or certain options, I should say, as a drop down. The same for status. So let me build this out. The way we're going to do this is we're going to set up a new sh new new sheet. So at the bottom here, we're going to create it. And we're going to call it key. Okay. And move this to first position. Let's call this product backlog one because I'm going to be showing you another template that you may want to leverage in a second. So we'll call this product backlog one. Now what I'm going to do at this particular moment in time, I'm actually just going to copy this and put that in there like that. That was a control C, so I selected all those and press control V. So what I'm gonna do now is set up the key. So we're gonna want key items for, we're gonna want a yes or no. So if I go back in here, actually, I'm gonna select all of this. So from cell A1 through to D2, control C, go into the key, control V, and I'm just gonna rename this to key. Okay, again, just giving this, doc, this sheet a title. Now we're gonna have a yes or no, and I'm gonna bold that, and I'm gonna put that in a gray, and I'm gonna put yes, no, and I'll put this in a little table like this. And then we're gonna do the same for, I'll make that a bit like this. I'm gonna do the same for priority. So I'm gonna copy this and do control V, but we're gonna remove that and type in priority. And the priority options are low, medium, and high. And I'm gonna put a border around that. So just select all of those cells and select all borders. I'm gonna press Control C, Control V on my keyboard, and I want another one for, so I'm gonna select that, Format Painter, put that green over here. I'm gonna put this as status. So our status options are not started, in progress, complete, overdue, and on hold. So these are good status options to have. And I'm gonna put the, the bordering around all on the home ribbon like this. And I think that's all we need from the key perspective. Now what we wouldn't wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to set up the data validation. So the first one is gonna be story. So we've done everything up to here. So if I select column H and I'm then gonna go on data. So at the top here, left click on here, I'm gonna go data validation, select this option. We're gonna click data validation. In the settings where it says allow, we're gonna do list. And then in the source, so click in here, and then you can click into this sheet, the key we've just created, and you'll see it writes that out for us. We just want to select these two options, so B5 and B6. You'll see that here, B5 through to B6, press OK. And what this essentially does now 
is we have the option for the yes or no. We have this drop down for every single cell in this sheet, no matter how far down we go. The only problem is the way I've set this up on the column level is that you'll notice it appears in these cells here, which we don't want. So what I'd recommend that we do is select H1 through to H4, click on data, data validation, again at the top, data validation, and in the allow, just put any value. So put that back to any value and you'll see here, it removes the data validation from the cells we want it, we don't want it in, and in the cells we do want it in, you can see it. So now I've just done that for story. We just need to go through that process for the other columns. So sprint ready, we need to do the same. So data validation, data validation, list, source, click in here and then go into here. Again, this is a yes or no, press OK. Select cell I1 through to I4, data validation, data validation, any value. I know I'm doing this quite quick, but I don't want this video to go on for too long and I'm literally going through the same process. So let's do priority. I'll do this slow and then I'll do the other one, the other status one quick, just to show you how, you know, how to do this. So J, select column J, data, data validation, data validation, list, source. Now we're going to the key here. We don't want this one this time. We want this one. So select D through to D7, D, sorry, D5 through to D7. So equals key, D5 to D7. Press OK. And you'll notice we've got the priorities now in this particular column. I want to remove the data validation from J1 through to J4. So select those cells, data, data validation, data validation, list, within the allow, sorry, we want to be any value. Press OK. Status, let's do it again. Select column K, data validation, data validation, list, source. So click in the source, go in here, and this time it's going to be this lot here. So F5 through to F9 equals key, F5 through to F9. Press OK. We've got our status in. So fantastic. That's looking good. Story points are going to be, you know, zero two one five etc so that's just a obviously a menu entry and the last one we need set up is assigned to sprint so select column m data validation data validation list source click in here go to key and it's going to be these two so a yes or no so we've got a yes or no let's remove the data validation from here data validation data validation list any value okay so now we have our first and i'll remove these out we have our first template this is the first product backlog template now i want to sh quickly show you how we can set up the second template you may want to use that instead of this one or alongside it because they both serve slightly different purposes so what i'm going to do in the interest of time is i am literally just going to duplicate this um, move or copy, create a copy. Okay, we'll call this two. Now the fields that we want for this particular product backlog are going to be task ID. Now we don't want this one. I'm actually just gonna remove lots of these out. I'm just gonna delete that out like that for now. So we want task ID as a, duh, duh, duh. so in this particular Column here, we want to be able to put the role of the individual. Then we're going to have, I want to dot, dot, dot. So we can put that in here. And then we're going to want to have, so that dot, dot, dot. And then in this one, we can put the benefit. So this could be the deliverable, and this is going to be the benefit of doing so. Then we want to have, I want to press control C here, because I've deleted too many columns out, control V. Control V, Control V. Now I'm going to make this home format painter. Let's move this out like this. So we've got so that this needs to be priority. This needs to be sprint and this needs to be status. So all I need to now do is just map the fields. So these are all just text fields. Priority it's data validation again, and we can leverage the existing key that we've created. So I just move this over at the bottom there. I don't know if you saw that. So click here, home, uh, sorry, data on the ribbon at the top, data validation, data validation, settings. We're going to go list, source. We're going to go in here, and we're going to select um, 
oh, I mean, I forgot what I was doing, priority. So let's do that again, data validation, data validation, list, source, in the key, priority is here. So D5 through to D7. Okay, so now we have the priority set up. Sprint um, can leave as is, and then, because that'll just be the sprint number or name. And then status here, data validation, data validation, list, source is here. Select all of those. So turn that to list, source, click in there, go to the key, and then select all of these, press OK. And that will give us our statuses. Now, if you've just watched this second product backlog and are not quite sure how I got to this particular table and formatting, watch the first product backlog, uh, go through that process, and you'll, you'll basically have this. So there you go, two Agile product backlog templates ready for you to use and leverage. I hope this video is useful. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, best of luck over to you, and I hope you have an excellent day.